Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, we want to welcome our visitors. We want to welcome our state and national friends that are joining us for church this morning. Amen. 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 Oh, you know, <clears throat> we've been talking, or I've been talking about kingdom minded, being kingdom minded, kingdom mindsets. And last week, Pastor Danny did a teaching last Sunday that was, it was awesome. And I talked about it a little bit Tuesday. You know, a lot of people struggle when they hear truth because they find out that they haven't heard it the way it should have been spoken, the way it should have been brought. Truth, right? Truth. And it's amazing to find out how many people really do struggle with truth. They would rather believe a false statement or a false idea, a lie, than truth. And how do you know that? Well, we can all look at our life somewhere we believe the lie, right? We believe something that's, that's just been so, but it's a norm to us. But then we have to remember we're not normal, right? We're, we're different. We're peculiar. So we're going to go to Proverbs 3. That's where we're going to start this morning. In Proverbs 3, we see people quote it. We see people running around with it, you know, and they pick and choose what part of it they, they really want. <clears throat> but I saw something different when I was looking at it again. I love that about the Word. Every time you go to the Word, you see what? You see new things. Or you have an understanding of something that in the beginning helped you, but now with what you have now, the knowledge you have now, the revelation you have now, then that Word should be even deeper for you mean more to you, right? Everybody good? Yeah. We're going to start at verse 1. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Is that any different than now? No. No. Because who is the life? Jesus, Right? And so it goes on and says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the table of your heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Now that's pretty powerful because so shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And when I read that, you know, this is something that I had to learn. A lot of times... And we'll, we'll go down here in a minute. We'll look at that. But if we don't have understanding of things, you know how some people like big words? They hear someone say a big word, and they kind of see it in a little bit of a context, and they're like, ooh, I got a big word. So then they want to use that word, and then all of a sudden the word they've used is not in context <laughs> with what's really being said. And I'm like, what? I've done it. And then I find out, oh, no. That's, that was not the right word. So what did I do? I actually created a wrong thought, a wrong image for someone else. I'd already apparently believed it because I said it. So, you know, I created that. But in verse 4, he says, So <clears throat> thou shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Man, there's that word again. We talk about trust, right? Trust in the Lord with what? It didn't say part of your heart. It didn't say some of your heart. It said what? All of your heart. Does that change when we make Jesus Lord and Savior? The trust has to what? You are supposed to trust him with everything, right? Trust him in all things, right? But how many of us are challenged with that? And we'll, we'll kind of touch on some things. Because I know some people tell me I like stories. Stories are great. But what's your story? What's your testimony? I can go to the Bible and I can look at stories all day long and I can see amazing things. That was great for them. That shows me that I can do the same things. So what is my story? 
Because my story should be his story. Right? What he's already done, what he's already put in place, that should be my story. But a lot of people are struggling with their story because it's not, it's fiction. It's not truth. So he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your what? Own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So <clears throat> I'm going to trust the Lord with all my heart. I am now at a point, if I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus, I can't take my old thinking and my old understanding to understand a new thing. Right? I can't sit here and look at you as I'm a new creature. I can no longer look at you or anyone else with my old man understanding because I'm a new creature in Christ. And what should I be doing? I should be seeking him. Right? Some people are like, we're not saying anything. We're not saying nothing. But then it goes on. It says, in all thy ways acknowledge him. Okay, so in all my ways I'm to acknowledge him. That means, okay, God, here's my situation. So I'm going to acknowledge you in this situation. And then I go about my way. Is that really what that means? No. No. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Now, I love this. This hit me this morning and I was like, man. And when something hits you, you just, whew. So look at it like this. In all thy ways, know him. And he will direct what? My path. He will make my crooked places what? Straight. He will make my path that I'm on right now because I trust him, isn't that what it says? Trust him with all my heart. Don't lean on what I think, because if I do, I'm going to mess up. I do it every time. I am not one of those that can get away with it. I just can't. But remember, we're talking new creatures in Christ. We're talking a kingdom mindset. We're talking that if you, so many people are wanting to find new ways, new things, new understandings, but they have to understand you can't get to those new things if you keep coming with the old mindset. You can't. If you want to keep bringing your old nature, trying to bring it up front, the new man does not know who, who that old nature is. So it's like, ah, oh, you ain't got room here. So we're, now there's a battle going on. Where's the battle at? It's in your mind. Right? So when I looked at this, I said, okay, so lean not unto my own understanding. Okay, all right, I get you, I get you. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lord, I'm going to trust you in every situation, even if my flesh doesn't want to. Now, I, Wednesday night at New Way, I talked about voices. What voice do you hear? You know, a lot of people struggle, and I want to get the psychological and the medical out of it, because that the Bible is about what? Flesh and spirit, right? And we're to live by what? The spirit, correct? So one of the things that we talked about was that in Jeremiah 29, it talked about not listening to the, the prophets and the diviners that are in the midst of the ones that were exiled. And it also talked about not letting the dreams that you dream, don't believe the, every dream that you dream. And we've, t we've, I mean, that's something that I was always taught as uh, operating in my gift that when I dream, you need to take your dreams and dissect them. Well, then what am I doing? I'm so focused on my dream that I can't hear the Lord thinking, and I'm trying to get some understanding and all that. And I read that, and it was like, wow. And then over time, finding out not every dream is from God. I don't care who you are. Hear me when I say this. You can be someone who's been in the Word for years, have all kinds of fruit. I mean, God has blessed you, but that doesn't mean that you take every dream and believe it because that's how they got where they are today because they didn't. Because sometimes we sit here and we want to take our dreams and we want to make them real spiritual. And they may not have nothing to do with anything. It's just a distraction, okay? So we're talking about what you're paying attention to, what you're listening to, what you're focusing on. Okay? So I talked about the voices. I said, did you know pain has a voice? 
Anxiety has a voice. Um, everything that we deal with has a voice. Well, how did thoughts come in your mind without a voice? Right? So I was sitting there and I was talking about the thing is, we have to understand, and I do so, I, it was something very simple. When you're hurting, what voice do you hear? Your own. But when I'm in the Word, what, whose voice do I hear? I'm supposed to hear God's voice, right? And doesn't God's voice override any voice? But then as I'm in my Word and God's voice, I'm hearing God's voice in this, and all of a sudden then it does become my voice. Because I've chosen to hear the truth. But so many people still want to hear the other voice. When pain comes along, I got a pain, ow. What did you just do? Well, you acknowledged the pain, you gave it a voice, right? So now that you've given it a voice, now what's going to happen on the inside and internally? You're going to keep going, oh, I got a pain, ow, I got a pain, oh, oh. Now, the enemy, in the beginning, we saw where the enemy came to Eve, right? And he twisted the word. Did God say? And then she added two. Well, anytime you add to the word or take away the word, it's done. It's not the word anymore, right? So he was prophet lying. Do you know we're the prophet of our own lives? We really are. If we confess the word and then we be believe the word, we can have what the word says, right? By acknowledging it, by believing on it, correct? Mm -hmm. But if you want to sit there and believe the other voices, then are you telling yourself truth? If you're saying you're in him and he's in you? Not at all, and we'll look at that in a minute. But it says, in all thy ways acknowledge him. In all thy ways know him, and he'll direct your paths. Well, now, wait a minute. This is Old Testament, and I heard somebody the other say, why are you coming out of Old Testament? And I said, well, is it true? Absolutely. So if they talked about it then, we just get to walk in it now. Because even when it talks about our healing, it says in the Old Testament we are, but in the New Testament you were. It was already done. But see, so many people keep going, I am. No, you were. See, this is where, again, what are you listening to? Well, I am healed. No, you were healed. You were healed. When Jesus became your Lord and Savior, you what? You were healed. It was already done. Right? I know sometimes those things are so simple. But it's truth. Correct? Okay. So he says, and always know him because if I don't know him, he can't direct my path because I can't hear him. If I don't acknowledge in all my ways, if I don't know him, then how can he direct my path according to what he has spoken? He can't because I don't know him. Ah, oh, come on now. Come on. You know, we got to really get this. Pastor Danny was talking last Sunday. One of the biggest challenges, you know, the Bible says that Jesus didn't think it was robbery to be what? Equal with God. But everybody's like, oh, but that's Jesus. Well, did you know? That's me too. So why don't we walk like it? Why don't we believe it? Come on. Because Jesus said that he gave us all power and authority, right? That aren't we supposed to do greater than he did? So if I'm supposed to do greater than Jesus did, I'm not there yet. I'm going to be, I'm just not there yet. I want to be there. But if you do not continue to renew your mind to what the Word says, and you do not get it in you, how can you do more? You can't. 
Jesus was here a limited amount of time. How long have we been here? Come on. We've been here a long time. We've all been born again, we say. A long time, right? Right? Greater things that we should do. A lot of people think those things are just these massive miracle signs and wonders. Sometimes it's just expanding his kingdom where it hadn't been expanded before. Right? We try to make it so big that in our mind's eye, we have the enemy telling us, see, it's not you. You can't do it. That's, he says we're just supposed to what? Preach the good news, right? Jesus went to the cross for what purpose? So that we could what? Fulfill purpose. Right? Come on. Come on. And that's the thing that's interesting. Because I've learned how you can start pulling people. Some of you may not understand that, but you've got to learn some of the terms. People want to sit in a chair and they want to sit there and go, well, I don't, you know, no, we're going to keep pulling. We're going to keep dipping into you and we're going to keep pulling out of you. Now, what you do with it is up to you. Just like whenever someone's sitting up here speaking, we know how to supply them. We know how to sit there and give them what they need and we can draw out of them what they have because what do we need? Do you want truth? Do you want the word? That's why when Pastor Danny sitting there last week and I'm like, man, it's been a long time since I heard somebody preach this like this and I loved it because it reminds us and then it gets me back into a place I needed to be. It really does because sometimes we can get caught up with the voices, other people's voices in their situations and it's like, you know what, if you want to hear that voice, you go ahead and I'm sorry you're not happy. I hate to hear that but I can't let you bring me down because you're not happy because that's the voice I'm hearing. Because you don't have control over me. You're not my Savior. Jesus is. See, they also, I talked about that Tuesday. We tend to make people our Savior when it sit there. What do you mean? If it's contrary to the Word, but yet I choose to believe it, then what have I done? I've made that my Savior, and that's not it. I did. I wrote some things down. Oh, when you hear and not do, you forget over time who you are. You can hear the word all day, but if you do not do what the word says, you do not meditate on it, you do not stay there until it's in you, then you will begin to forget who you are and then people wonder what happened. I watch people that I've seen grow and grow and grow and it's like, man, because why? They were surrounded with the word every day. They were in the word every day. Correction came, growth came, all this stuff, but all of a sudden their situation changed. Just because your situation changed should not change your position with the word at all. That means you said, now I've had to do this because now that my situation changed, I can't neglect that just because my situation changed. That is still my truth. But if I step away from it and I don't do what I'm supposed to do with it, I will begin to forget who I am. And then I have to have somebody remind me. And usually when that happens, it's already because I'm in a position I really shouldn't have been in because I let it get to me. And I didn't want to hear what they really had to say, but yet they're trying to save my life. That's really what they're doing. Because I have forgotten in that moment who I am. And we're to never do that. But some people haven't even attained who they are yet, and they say, well, I don't know who I am yet. Well, you should, so if you haven't, you're not... You're not doing what the Word says. You're not guarding your eyes. You're not guarding your ears. You're not guarding your mouth. Why? Because, yes, there's a lot of voices out there, but make sure whose voice you're listening to. Just like a lot of people that get, they get caught up in 
and, and with politics or they get caught up in conspiracy theories. They get caught up in, well, God's called me to help people. God's called me to minister to people. Okay, well, then I got a question. What are you ministering? And they look at me, well, what do you mean? What am I ministering? Well, are you ministering truth? Well, what do you mean? They come to me with a problem, and I come back to them with the truth. And I'm like, okay, so let me ask you, when they come to you with a problem, how do you speak to them? And they're like, what do you mean? You know, it's interesting how we respond to them can also be one of those voices that's not a godly voice. You can tell someone, oh, I understand. That doesn't mean I'm agreeing with what's going on. It just means I understand where you are. I understand the situation. But I'm not going to come up to you and I'm not going to go, oh, you poor thing. You have this and you have that. That's not correct. That's not what the Bible says. Is that right? If the Bible says that you are already healed, you are come from a place of wholeness, then why am I going to sit there and agree with what you're telling me your symptoms are and saying this, that's what you have? Why would I do that? What am I doing? Now I've become a voice that's bringing you a lie, and I'm accountable for that. Because if I know what the Word says, again, I've been hearing the Word, but am I doing the Word? You know, the Bible says that we're supposed to come in love and we correct in love, right? But it says that's what we're supposed to do is help what? Help each other, right? Hello? Because if I don't love you, I'm not going to help you. Come on, how many are? Come on. How many are like that? Mm -mm, I don't like, mm -mm. Nope. But you know what they're doing is wrong. Well, that's on them. <gasps> mm. See, that's who's talking now. Anger. Bitterness. That's what's talking to you now. And then you have to admit, it's not, a, it's not a strange voice. It's really your voice. Come on. We're talking believers. We're not talking the world right now. We're talking believers. And in that place, if that's the voice you choose to hear then that voice is taking the place of the voice of Jesus. And now who is your Savior? Not Jesus. Right? Everybody good? Because he says, in all thy ways, know him. And he will direct my path. Because if I, again, if I don't know him, he can't direct me. Because I don't know him. That's why he, they, oh, relationship, not just with him, but with the body is important. And not just anybody, not just any body of believers. Because there's body of believers that need the truth that God has given you. But you have to get the revelation of the truth so you can give others. And then there are some that have revelation that you need but you better be wise just because of who they are that you're not going, mm, I don't need that because then you're rejecting him, right? See, that's why when people say, oh, I got a word, I got that. Okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. But I'm, what am I comparing it to? The word. And then if something's in me and I'm not sure what it is, I'm like, okay, you know what? I, I, will, I will ponder on that and... Let it go with that. And then I'm going to go, okay, Lord, you show me. I need some help understanding because, again, there's something I don't know. But if this is you, I need to know. Because then that means this is going to what? It's going to direct my path. Because even, you know, the Lord tells us about false prophets because they what? They be prophet line. That's what they are. They prophet line. So then it goes on and it says, verse 7, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Be not wise in your what? Own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. 
Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So many people reject when God's trying to bring increase based on what they've heard before, right? But if they would go back to the word themselves, read what it says. All he's saying is do what? Acknowledge him first in all that you do, all that you have because it's his anyway, right? So why wouldn't I want to bring to him my increase? Why would I not want to bring to him my first of everything? Because I'm to first seek ye the kingdom of God, and all of those things will be added. Well, when they're added, I want to what? All right, when they're added, Lord, now i got to know you to know how to direct my path in it. What do I do with it now? See, that's where people sometimes mess up. Because it's like, okay, can we go back <laughs> to nine? So he says here, he says, honor, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all your increase so that what? Your barns are filled with plenty and your presses will burst forth with new wine. But again, first seek ye the kingdom of God and all the stuff is added, but there's a purpose for it. And that's where so many people get lost. They have made the purpose for what God wants to do to expand kingdom, for God wants to do to help others, and they've taken it to the point of, I'm going to do this so I can have that for me. Right? These are just examples. Because a lot of people use this scripture, but then it goes on, it says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Neither be weary of his correction, for whom the Lord loveth, he what? He corrects, even as the father, the son in whom he delighteth. So if I know him, if I know him, he's going to direct my path, right? But if I'm getting to know him and I mess up, then I got to what? I got to take my correction because he what? He loves me enough to say, look, Okay, you don't go to the left, you stay straight. Don't go to the left, stay straight. Well, I want to sit here and I want to do this and this and this. Okay, did you know him in all your ways? Did you? Did you? Again, I like how Pastor Danny talked about this too, about... When he talked about the ask and the seek and the knock and the prayer, it's for someone else. That's what, that's, that hit me. Oh, I love that. Because again, we tend to what? We want to pray for us, but God's wanting us to what? Pray for others. And maybe they don't know what to pray for. They don't know how to pray. God's wanting to, to do something for them. And it just goes back to, for me, another principle. You take care of my house, I'll take care of your house. So when God brings me those things that because I've obeyed him, it's not for me. Now I got to what? Know him on what to do with that. We know right now we've been talking and we've been talking. We're in a place of preparation. So when God says prepare, is that always fun? No, that's called work. But not just work in the natural. He also wants us to get work here too because we're going to need to know him. When things break off, break out, whatever you want to call it, right? And then if I don't, I've got to be connected to people that do. Where we can sit down like wise counsel and go, okay, this is my situation. I mean, this, you know, it could be this, it could be that. Let's sit and let's talk about it, right? That's part of the preparation, I can sit here and I can prepare, I can can food, I can do all this stuff. But then when everything breaks out, I've got to know what God wants me to do when it's time. 
And some people don't understand, why are y'all doing all that? Because God said, prepare. We know him in this, and when it's time, then what's going to happen? He'll direct my path. But I got to prepare, so in the preparation, I'm letting him just lead me and guide me, right? And trusting him what's on the other side. Sometimes it doesn't feel good. All right. You know, sometimes we sit here and we fight in our homes and we sit here and we struggle with one another and we tr struggle trying to change one another and we struggle with, well, you don't understand me and, and you don't understand me and you need to this and you need to that and you need to this and you need to that. But the thing is, why don't you just do what you need to do and let God do what he needs to do? Now, when the time comes, and there will be times of confrontation, There will be, t and you have to confront. There will be times confrontation is needed and necessary because you also have to decide what are you going to allow in your home? What are you going to allow? Because everybody wants to quote for me in my house, we serve the Lord. Well, then you better guard your doors. You better guard your gates. And if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and walking in the freedom of who I am, right, then I'm okay. You want to see that for the other one, right? You want to see that for your other family members? You want to see that for your friends? But they have to make that choice. There are some decisions you can't make for them. But see, that's the beauty about going into prayer for them. That's the beauty about seeking God, okay, God, for them. That's why I tell people, I don't pray. Lord, you change, change. That's not my job. It's his. But what I do pray is the will, God's will for their life. That's really what I want no matter what. And I'm telling you, God will not let you down in it. He won't. Because he'll put you in such a place of freedom that you just walk in a place of, I mean, seriously, of peace, dominion, and authority of who you are in him. That man, it won't move you. When things happen. It doesn't mean it's going to feel good. But if you stay in him. Again this is also part of that preparation. It really is. And. Hmm. Sometimes some family members aren't going to go with you. They're just not. But are you going to let that hold you back? can't the other day uh i was sitting there watching a uh individual talk and they went to their spouse and they had a moment this was years ago and they had a moment and their spouse finally looked in their face said you know what my kids will never see this again because of the way they acted she flat stood up and hit her her husband's and he was in ministry he was growing but she stood in his face and she said these kids will never see that from you again she, she laid it down. And he said, I've never forgotten that. He said that still didn't mean they didn't have problems, but that put me on notice real quick. Because if we believe for me and my house we serve the Lord, do we understand really what that means? Do we really? A lot of people just put it up, oh, me and my house we serve. This is just a cute little saying. It's just, you know. No, there's more to that. If I'm going to serve the Lord, that means i got to guard my heart. I got to guard everything because it's my responsibility, not his. People go, Lord, Lord, just guard my ears, guard my mouth. No, God said you do that. I told you to do that. I told you to do that. So I've had to even kick myself because I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, man. And we talk about it too. I mean, we talk about the, you know, oh, that got to me and I shouldn't have let it. Oh, something got to me. Ah. Oh. But I did. So in that moment, then I, what? All right, God, I acknowledge what I did. God said, now what are you going to do about it? I don't have to keep running back to him. God, forgive me, forgive me. That's already done. I have to what? Repent. Again, change the way I think. That's it. But then here's what you got to do when someone does that. Stop bringing it up. Once the change is made. I said once the change is made, stop living in the past. Because now you are taking something they're set free from. 
And now it's all sudden on you. I can't let them go without letting, reminding them. I must remind them what they did. Well, you're the only one, because... <laughs> but how many people deal with that? How many people deal with that? And, you know, this is something that uh, we've been honest about with people. It's like, look, very open about things, have to be. Don't say we always like them either. But he tells us that we're supposed to do that. He loves us enough to correct, right? We're supposed to do that too. But people get so offended when it comes. And we can't. You can't be offended by truth. If you are, then truth is not your Savior. Jesus is not your Lord and Savior. He's just not. I know that's hard. Some people go, that is not true. Well, didn't he take shame, guilt, condemnation? Didn't he take all that stuff? Didn't the Bible say he took it? He took every, he bore everything upon himself. So I've got to what? Renew my mind to understand what that means. And you have to be honest with yourself when you're dealing with something and you just realize, uh-oh, <laughs> in that situation, I did not ge let Jesus uh, rule and reign me in that. I did not remember him because what? That other voice had a little bit more volume a little bit more sound but then what do you do you run back right see it's what you do when you find out the truth what do you do with it what do you do with it everybody still good yeah. are we sure yeah. so in the mind of Christ is freedom there's no shame no guilt no condemnation right the mind of the enemy though is all of those things because that's what he feels. He lost everything, did he not? So does he want you to feel freedom? Does he want you to know freedom? Of course not. But here's the thing. He has no power over us. Correct? Except to drop a thought. And this is where so many people struggle going, but the, the voice is in my head. And what do we tell him? Oh, y'all can say it loud enough. It's okay. We're grown. What you do? You tell them to what? Shut up. Oh, some people go, oh, but it's on camera. It doesn't matter. <laughs> God's ready for those to be bold and walk in the truth. Tell them to shut up. Not people. <laughs> unless they're coming, you know. <laughs> I saw that. I... I <laughs> I just got that thought, and it's like, wait a minute, hold on, <laughs> hold on. We're talking about the voices. You get to tell the voices to shut up. And you're going to have to. Because whatever voices you're listening to, if they're literally overpowering the voice of Jesus, you've got to tell them to shut up. That means you're going to have to tell yourself to shut up. I have to tell myself that. I'll pop off and say something, and I'm like, oh! Shut up. Why did you say that? <laughs> and then I have to identify why I said it. And it's because I'm in my feelings. I'm in my feelers, as they say. Anger is a feeling. It's an emotion. Yeah. It is. And that's something a lot of people struggle with. Me too. I get mad and I get angry. However, the Bible says if I know him, He'll direct my path and even my anger. And sometimes it's just zip the lip. That's true. Zip it. <laughs> zip it. Yep. And then go to him and find out what do I do with it. What made you so mad? What made you so angry? Oh, did you not get your way? Did you not get what you wanted? Oh. That's why I usually get mad. Usually. But sometimes when somebody comes at me, and I catch what I'm going to say, and it's not truth, it's really not truth, it makes me mad. But again, how am I going to deal with it? Yeah. I say, Lord, how do I deal with this? That's a lie. That's a lie from the pits of hell. And I'll call it what it is. But I'm also dealing maybe with someone who doesn't really know and I need them to understand. And if, I'm, if I react in the moment, 
So I have to find out why does it bother me if I'm free? Why does it bother me if it's, if it's not true? Why does it bother me so much? Oh, no, because they want to pick a fight. You want to sit there and lie on me? See, you got to go back and say, okay, that's old man nature. Trying to come up, new man's like, Where, what are you? Right? Remember, there's no room in the new creature for the old man. There's no room there. And you have to understand that. And I sat there with the Lord and I said, you know, if there's no room... Man, I better make sure I understand what that new creature looks like. I better understand that everything that happened to that old man is not me now. We talked about this the other day. Watched a movie. It just brought back flashbacks and stuff, and it really hit me. And then I had to be reminded, but that wasn't you now. That's not who you are now. This person you are now, that didn't happen to. That happened to that old, old man, that old person. I'm like, you know what? You're, you're right. You're exactly right. But now that I'm this new creature, things that do happen, I must understand if I'm free in him, if it's not true, why am I bothered by it? Why does it move me? See? It's those feelers, those feelings. Oh, those feelings can get you. Everybody good? Yeah. Okay. Oh, let's see. All right, I'm going to keep going. I just want to make sure I'm on on the right on the right track here cuz I'm fixing to have to shift. All right. So then he goes on and he says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She's more precious than rubies and all the things canst desire are to be compared to her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, hand, uh, hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She's a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is everyone that retaineth her. So it tells us when it talks about this true happiness, it says what? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. And where do you find that? Hmm? Well, where does wisdom come from? And then you got to get the understanding. Right? So we're going to go to now Matthew. Or no, I apologize, John 14. Just real quick. <laughs> now I'll start at verse five. It says, Thomas said unto him, Lord. We know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known, the, known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto uh, him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto them, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. So it also shows you even Jesus was a hearer, but he was a doer as well, right? He did what the Father said, and this very familiar scripture, but we've got to really get this. He sat there and he said that he never spoke of himself, but the Father that was in him. 
That's who he spoke about. That's who he spoke of. That Whatever the Father speaks, that's what I speak. So it tells you when you speak what the Father speaks, then who does the work? What said here, that he doeth the works. But Jesus guarded his mouth. He didn't speak out of who he was. He didn't speak out of opinion. Jesus knew who he was, and he never went out of the boundaries of that. But mankind has gotten to a place of selfishness that they will speak out of their boundaries of themselves. Jesus said, I guard myself that I never speak anything except what my Father speaks. That means if we say we're in him and he's in us, then we should do the same thing. Correct? That means when the enemy comes to tempt us, shouldn't we speak the word only? When the enemy comes and lies to us, shouldn't we speak the word only? Isn't that what Jesus did? Absolutely. But do we do that or do we give an opinion on how we feel? Okay, I'll give you an example. We've sat here and we've been standing regarding um, Farron's health. Now, I can be in agreement with him only if it's truth, right? But if it's not truth, I can't be in agreement with that. I'm, I will not. And so what we have to do sometimes as fellow believers, whenever someone comes up and they're, how are you feeling today? We listen to what they say. And if it's not the word, shouldn't we, in love, help them with the word by correcting what they're saying? Hello? Come on. How many people get upset when you come in and you're like, well, I'm just, I don't feel very good today. And somebody comes up and says, oh, but, and then quotes scripture. Just to remind you. But how many people get, they didn't feel sorry for me. They didn't feel sorry for me today. Come on, I'm. I've done it too. You can laugh because, look, we got to be transparent. That's something else we talk about here. People sometimes struggle with the transparency. It's okay when you're transparent with somebody, but when somebody else is transparent about you, you don't like it. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I felt that way too. I have felt that way too, but how's anybody going to grow if we're not transparent with anything? And that's why I like the ones that... I, it's a different group that I get to talk to now, and they see my tra the transparency in my life. I don't hold things back. It's helped them. It's helped them understand things. And it's a door, an opportunity to talk about Jesus. So here we go, and we've got people that have come to him, and they're like, oh, I want to pray for you. And, and he's told them no. And they're like, what? No, because you're not going to be in agreement with what this says, and I've got people that are in agreement with this. And it was like, okay. Because again, when you're dealing with things of the kingdom and you've got the enemy right there knocking at the door, you better have your people in agreement with you according to the word. I'd rather have a room full of warriors that's in agreement with what the Word says than somebody's just like moved off feelings and just says, you know, I just pray I hope God heals you, you know, and that's not a prayer. Come in agreement with what I believe according to that. But if I don't even believe that, I'm not going to agree with you. I'm not. And that's why you have to talk to people. You have to take the time. Some people just want to run and jump and say, hey, well, I'm going to pray for your healing. And oh, please do. And I'm like, first off, i got to know what you believe. Do you believe what the Bible says about your healing? What do you believe? That he, he'll heal me? No, that's not what it says. It says it's already done. I'm going to be in agreement with you according to Romans what? 8.11. And it, the other day we were out and, and somebody had said something and he quoted Romans 8, 11 to them. They just, just stood there. They didn't know what to say. They had no idea. They were like, what? 
He said, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of me and gives life to my mortal body. And they're just looking like, what? Just keep speaking truth. Keep speaking truth. You're, you're sowing a seed. You're doing something apparently somebody else hasn't that they need. But again, we've had people come up and say, I just need you to pray that my relationship with my daughter, you know, will get better. And I said, you know what? How about we pray that God, your relationship with Jesus is what it needs to be. And then we'll pray for her relationship with Jesus. And that's where we'll go. I'm not going to sit here and pray. Witchcraft. Because that's really what it is. I'm going to pray the will that God's will for your life, that God's will for their life. Because, see, here's what a lot of people don't understand. And I haven't done a teaching on it, and I'm still chewing on some of this stuff because it's, it's really good. But a lot of people don't understand. Whenever you get married, you leave your mother and your father, right? That's what the Bible says. Husband leaves the mother and the father, right? right. Cleaves to the wife. Yeah. Cleaves. Why? So God now can make them a family. I was part of this family. Here, catch me. I'm part of this family. But then when it's time, then God's like, okay, now you're going to come over and make this family. So what does that mean? This dynamic's changed. Now I need you to focus on this dynamic, right? Like we're a family here, correct? Yeah. But we're many families, yeah. right? Yeah. So if, if we're many families, that means each family here has a purpose, yeah. right? Yeah. But we're still part of his family. And then as a whole, we have a purpose. But see, so many people want to go, well, I'm over here and I'm, I'm part of this family. Well, okay, but really technically, you're supposed to come over here and create now your family. And then when everybody's in a, where they need to be, then you come together what? And say, okay, God, now what for us as a family? It's, a beautiful, it's, it's an amazing thing and trying to go into it. It's like, wow, I see things. If people understood more of this, they would really see the, the understanding of the unity in the home. They really would. And they would stop trying to save everybody else. Focus on what God has you to do because, see, that's another thing. So many people, they've got adult children and they're trying to run and save their homes and this and this and it's bringing division in their home and that's not correct. That's not, that's not God. Hmm. And that's where, again, you have to decide. And, we talk to fam and we've talked to families that their children take precedent over their spouses. And then you try to tell them that. And they're like, oh, that's my kid. I get that. But the Bible's clear how you train up a child in the way they should go, right? right. And everybody quotes that one scripture, spare the rod, spoil the child. And then we remind them that's not what it says. You spare the rod, you hate the child. That's not true. I love my child. If you don't do this, later on, let's find out how much love you've got whenever they're just saying, yeah. just saying. Some people get very upset about those things, but it's okay. It's got to be okay, right? Because what? I love you enough to what? Speak truth to you. And we have to realize people love us enough to speak truth to us. I remember that love thing. That love is love. It really is. It really is. Okay. So then he goes on. He says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. For verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. But why would he say that? He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Well, it's pretty simple when we really realize it. If we can go back to the very beginning of 12, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. When you believeth on him, won't you do what he says? Won't you know? Won't you acknowledge him? And instead of being a hearer only, you're going to be what? 
a doer. So when you're a doer, the works that he said, I do, shall you do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Because see, now he's saying, as long as you stay this way, stay focused, do what, do the thing, hello. That means that when I go, I can trust you. I've given you instructions so that what? The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. They didn't catch that, I don't think. Because I'm like, wow, if I just do what I hear and trust, believe, man, I can just be walking down the street and if I obey the voice of the Lord, I wonder what those greater works would look like. I wonder what those things would look like. If I would just, when I'm in Walmart in the chaos and I'm walking through there and all of a sudden I hear the voice of the Lord give me an instruction and I do it because I trust him and believe him, what could happen? What could happen? Right? Hmm. But again, it lets us know that we say, well, it's a trust issue. It's not just a trust issue. Because if you trust him, you'll do what he says. Right? Hmm. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. But what do you have to do first? You got to believe. Right? You have to believe on him. The works that he says that I do shall you do also because you believe. And whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do. Why? Because you're doing what he's what? What he would do. You're doing the same thing. Mm. And he says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And a lot of people think, well, I'm sitting over here and I'm believing God for this and this, and I ask it in Jesus' name. But was it what you were supposed to do? Was it really an instruction? Was it witchcraft? Trying to manipulate, thinking you can for whatever reason. Trying to manipulate the word to do what you want. No. I want to know everything he did so that I can do that also. Again, Jesus thought it not what? Robbery to be equal with God. But so many people, it's new stuff for them because they haven't heard it. And they think, oh, because what mentality do they have? I'm not worthy. Well, that's not what he said. Why would he use somebody like me? Well, that's not what he said. That's what you choose to listen to. That's what you choose to believe. That's what you choose. Because if Jesus said that and we're joint heirs, that's my brother, right? Everything that's his is mine. He didn't say he was greater than. That was pointed out. That's not what he said. Equal to. But that's humble. That's humility. Knowing. Man. Wow. Man. That brings you to a place of like, you know what? I don't care what anybody says. You say it. And if you say that's all that matters. If you didn't count it robbery to be equal with God, why would I? If I'm doing this. Now, that's the key. That's the key. You have to do it according to what he says, what he did. He not only told them, he showed them. He said, you can't just say it. You can't just hear it. You got to what? Do it. And that's why he had to go so they would start doing stuff. Right? They were doing some things, but they weren't doing what they needed to. And he's like, okay, my time's running out here. I got to go, so you're going to do this. Because how many times have you been given something and God's trying to get it to you, but you're sitting there going, okay, okay, okay. And finally, it's like, okay. Well, now they get to get in a position to apply it. 
And that's where people tend to struggle because it's like, it's already been given to you. What have you been doing with it? It's already been there. Have you not been applying it? And then there's moments where I, you applied it here and it worked, but now you're in a different situation and it's not that it wouldn't work here, but you need something else for this moment. So you can't take that one word and just keep using it the whole time. God's wanting you to what? To grow, right? Okay. All right. Perfect example, simple example, one we use all the time. We sit there and go, by his stripes we're healed. By his stripes we're healed. By his stripes we're healed. Right? We hear it over and over. But yet Romans, what? 8, 11 comes along and that just, oh, whoa. And what did that do? That took you to another level, really, if you catch it, of coming out of that, 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 elementary thing of knowing, okay, Jesus by his stripes were healed, but now, oh wait, hold up, you mean the same spirit. Hold up, hold, wait a minute, the same spirit that rose the dead? Wait, what? See, it, it goes beyond now just a stripe. It goes beyond now just a, a healing of a wound. It goes to life. It goes to a place that now, if that same spirit that raised him from the dead, raised me from the dead, oh, a little boo-boo, come on. Oh, a little ear and oh, come on. Because now I got understanding. It's just not by the stripes that he took, but I got the same spirit. Exact, exactly, equality. I'm... But see, if you don't sit there and chew on it, and I do, I chew on it, I'm like, okay, I got it, I got it. And then God's like, oh, you do, do you? And then a situation will happen, I'm like, oh, wait, wait, hold it, wait a minute. Maybe it's not my health I'm talking about right now. Maybe it's something else. But the same spirit. See, what did, you, did Jesus just deal with healing, physical healings? No, he dealt with setting people free. He brought truth in their situation and their circumstances, didn't he? He sat there. It wasn't just for, I mean, that was the, look, healing was the small stuff. He's like, if you really want to sit here and you want to raise people from the dead, get them born again. That's true resurrection. Yeah. Right? Yes, we can raise people that have died, absolutely. But man, how awesome is it to sit there and have that same spirit in me that raised me <laughs> from the dead. And I didn't know I was equal with him because nobody told me. They, in fact, told me the opposite. They still wanted to keep me in a sinner mentality. They wanted to keep me in a slave mentality. Now, I'm talking slave, bondage. I'm not talking about freedom to serve. But now I've got what? Ooh, that same spirit. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you. So I need to speak to myself because I have that spirit in me. So the areas that I have sat here and I've not allowed to come back alive of the dreams and the vision that God gave me, then I guess I better tap into that. And one of the reasons, things I showed I, the Lord and I were talking about, if I, I, I use him a lot because we're just, we can do that. He was on a Tuesday, I think it was a Tuesday night or a Sunday afternoon. He was talking about, you know, there come times you're tired and you just, he just relaxes and tells the Holy Spirit, just, you know, just, and I got tickled because he's like, Holy Spirit, just have your way. I said, is that really what it looks like? But you know what? God reminded me of something. Years ago, going through what I was going through with my health, I remember sitting back, laying in bed, and just, in my, in me, just seeing the healing was already done, not knowing what I know now, not knowing it was done, not knowing. I just kept picturing everything in my body lining up. So I took the knowledge I had and I used it. I meditated on it. I began saying, Lord, anywhere there's an imperfection has got to go now in Jesus' name. Anything that doesn't line up with your word has to go now. And that's what I kept doing. And I kept doing, and I kept doing, and I kept doing. I chose to see life in my body, or I chose to see what death looked like, and I didn't want that. 
But now that I have more, now my thing is now what's going to be the next revelation? Isn't that beautiful? But you got to apply the first one first. When you get a new, you got to apply it then, right? Yeah. So this he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you what? Another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. That he'll sit with you. He'll aid you. He'll be there for you. Well, I got to saying, you know, we talk about a comforter. How many of us go to someone to comfort us? We want them to be with us. We want them to tell us what we want to hear. We want them to sit here and we want them to direct us. We do this. Isn't that what the comforter is supposed to be? It's not just to make me feel good, but he's also supposed to what? Lead me, guide me into what? All truth. All truth. But see, again, if you know what he's for, but you don't have relationship with him, then what begins to happen? You begin to forget who he is in you, who he is for you. Mm. He said, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you and will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but you see me because I live. You shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So here it says you can't just love the Father. You have to what? You've got to love the Son. You've got to know who he is. But you have to also understand you've got to know who the Spirit is too and the purpose that he's here. First thing he said was he's going to go and bring you what? A comforter. Again, a comforter is something we want to snuggle. Now, I'm looking in natural. Something you want to snuggle with and everything. But here he's talking about something that's going to aid you. He's going to teach you. He's going to be with you. He's going to lead you in all truth. So when I'm going through a situation, who should I go back to and find out what do I need to do? See, sometimes we forget who's with us, right? But any part of the Godhead? So if he's part of the Godhead, I can't even get revelation without him. I can have knowledge, but I need revelation. He's an advocate, a helper. I like this. This was, I, this was one of the definitions. A legal advocate who makes the right judgment call because he's close enough to the situation. But then it's up to me to what? Do it. Right? Right? He comes to lead us into a deeper knowledge of truth that gives us the strength Needed to endure, undergo trials, persecutions of the kingdom, not the world. The kingdom, not the world, because persecution only comes for what? Because of his namesake. It don't come because the world just mad at you. Don't come because the world's in such chaos and turmoil, they just don't even know why they're mad. So many times, again, people sit there and they'll try to say, oh my goodness, they came at me. I just feel like I'm just under so much persecution. So what, in his name, what did you do? For his name's sake, what did you do to bring this persecution? And a lot of times that's not it. It's just the world's angry. The world's just messed up. They're confused. And they're just taking it out on everybody. Does that really have to do with kingdom? No. It's when you're doing purpose. 
That's when it comes. When you're fulfilling purpose. See, so much has been acknowledged on the wrong things. Wrong things. Then he goes on, verse 22, Judah said unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make up our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not what? My sayings. So that means he's not a hearer. He's not hearing. <laughs> He's not hearing. And the world which ye hear is not mine. Oh, wait a minute. What? He that loveth me not, he don't keep my sayings because he doesn't hear me. And the word which he hears is not mine, but the Father which sent me. So again, Jesus is even showing us, don't put so much on yourself that you think it's you. It's his word. Because if they don't hear me, they're really not listening to the Father's what he's saying. But we want to put it all on us. Well, they wouldn't hear what I said. Well, okay, but it's not your word. They're denying. It's his. So why are you moved? But they're persecuting me. No, no, no. It's him. See, that takes all that off of you. Don't you love that? Because he knew who we were. He knew those things that we still deal with. So he's like, well, here, let me just remind you. Okay, they ain't coming for you. It's me. So stop trying to carry that weight. They're denying the Father. But again, make sure you're not looking at self. Just saying. I know, I've been there. I mean, like, they didn't receive me. They can get this and they... And God's like, well, you told them what I said, so okay. Don't take it so personal because now what's happened? You now have, oh my gosh, I've been rejected. So now you've got that thought, I, I've been there. You've got that thought of like, oh, will they reject me again if I say something else? And then what happens? Where's your focus? It's back on you. And you've now taken your focus off him again. Right? Come on, it's okay. I, I laugh, and I'll still do stuff, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. So then he goes on, and he says, but the comforter, verse 26, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and we know that teach is to instruct, impart knowledge, right? And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. Now, that's the key. He'll bring things to your remembrance of what he has said to you as long as you what? Hurt him, right? If, if you don't, I mean, if you don't listen, he can't bring something back that's not in you. He can't bring back something you haven't heard. Everybody goes, oh, but God gave me a new revelation. Really? Is it in the Word? I don't know. It, exactly. <laughs> it's not him. It's not because he says he'll only bring back what I've said. I'll only bring back what I've said. So that's why, again, we got to check the voices. So when I hear something, I know it's God. I know it's the Holy Spirit. It's just a knowing that I have, and it's amazing. I love it because it just takes me somewhere. But then there's times I'll question, so I'm thinking, I think part of it is, part of it isn't. I'm not sure. I write it down, and then what? I go, hey, I want to run something by you. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Because sometimes we can get just one word from God, and we can make it a whole paragraph. And then you're like, but it was God, I know. Well, maybe in the beginning, but then it took a trail. Because then you add, you want it, and can't do that. Jesus didn't. Never. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then we go, and verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Well, 
Isn't that a command? Isn't that instruction? Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. But how many people uh, deal with fear? How many people's hearts trouble? But what did he just say? Don't let your heart be troubled and don't let it be afraid. That means, did you believe me, really, at what I told you? Did you really believe? Did you really hear? I'm just saying. I mean, I can duck if I need to. But it goes hand in hand. It really does. Because he's not going to just say, well, part of this will work and part of it won't. No, it all goes together. Right? And you can't be afraid of people because if you're afraid of people, then people become your Savior. Catch what I'm saying? So many times people, well, I don't know what they're going to say if I tell them. What if I make them mad? But what if you don't? What if, though, I try to tell them what I've gotten and they, they're so far up there, you know, they're going to look at me like, oh, that's nothing. I know because I'm, I'm picking all this up. That all of a sudden I'm sitting here and I've got, I got this little revelation. I got big revelations. I said, well, share the revelation. See, it goes back to those things. If you allow, and they're not even part of it. I mean, they don't know. They don't know. Oh, if they come over here and they try to tell me a word, I'm, mm -mm, no, I'm not going to. But what goes on in people's heads? What goes on in people's thoughts? Well, I'm not going to say anything. I mean, what could I bring to the table? I'm, you can bring everything he's given you to the table. Right. So stop trying not to because you're allowing the wrong thought, the wrong voice to talk you out of it. So if you're allowing the wrong voice, the wrong thought to talk you out of it, you've made it more than Jesus. Right? It's okay. You can agree. Some people are like, I'm not saying nothing. Some can be mad. It's okay. Some people can be mad. It's okay. Why? Because that's between you and him. Right? I have to do what I'm supposed to do. I have to say what he tells me to say. And if it makes someone mad, I can't help that. That's not my fault. That's not my responsibility. Because whose is it? I'm like, I did what I said. Yeah, I did what you said. But how, again, so don't take things so personal. You know, it's funny. One of the things, too, we were talking about was like when people, they sit there and they're like, <sighs> people hop from one prophetic to the other. They just, that's all they live on. Give me a word, give me a word, give me a word. Give me a word, give me a word. And we, I look at people and say, you get a word every time. Why do you need another prophetic word? Well, th I mean, you know, till now, I know I, this is what I was taught. And then I caught myself doing that, what? Running from one prophetic word to another. And then God said, I'm done with that. And then he stopped giving me those prophetic words. He did. He said, no. He said, you get in my word. I'll tell you myself what that says. I'll tell you what you need to do. I'll tell you. Why do you have to have a person tell you? This was for me. Because it didn't go to the point of what it was meant to be. To let me know he's real. To let me know what I need you to know in the moment, but not to chase that and chase it and chase it. It was to get me to a place of knowing, wow, you do know. Because see, once you start chasing it, then over time what's going to happen is he'll shut it down. And then you're going to be sitting there and make sure you ain't being proper lied to. Because it should all match this right here. Because what is the most greatest thing that we could do is hear his voice, do what he says. Oh, my goodness. First, seek ye the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. And all the other stuff will be added. But when it's added, you better ask him, what do I do with it? I better know. 
I better, when I say I acknowledge him, I better know him so he can what, direct my path in it. Everybody good? We're going to stop there. And don't come, okay, and don't come to church with the mindset or the attitude of like, oh, here we go again, or oh my goodness, am I going to listen to this again? Because you know what? Until you get it, you got to listen to it over and over and over and over and over and over again. It may just be brought a different way, but it's still the same principles. Right? Is everybody good? Yeah. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you for another day coming together. Coming together in unity and harmony with expectations. Lord, your word will do what it says it will do because you said it. As long as we know you, listen to truth and obey it. That, Lord, we want to obey every instruction. Mm. And, Lord, thank you that you won't let anybody miss it, that you continue to bring the truth, that we continue to obey it, not just for ourselves, but for others. Lord, that we make sure we know the voice that we're hearing and we don't follow another voice. We don't follow the voice that's not your voice, that's not your word, that's not your truth. Those voices come, we tell them to shut up and take a stand. Go back to your word. Hear your voice. No more excuses. And Lord, we just thank you for Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying on that cross, giving us that same spirit that raised you from the dead, glory to God, raised us from the... Man, what can we not do for him? Mm-hmm. And that we don't count it robbery to be equal with God. Whew. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome. Always. That we heed the leading, the guiding, the teaching. And we obey. Lord, we thank you for this food that we're about to receive to the nourishment of our body. It's sanctified by the word in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen.